Outriders World Slayer launches to the masses tomorrow 28th June as early access but the question remains is World Slayer worth your time? This spoiler free review is here to answer that question. Let me start by saying World Slayer is awesome, having played through it it's really really good and the payoff after the build up to the final segment, I'll call it that cause it's a run up of levels, is absolutely incredible. I won't spoil it but it's awesome and you need to experience it for yourself because it's that good. I haven't played something that good in a long time. World Slayer is an expansion to the original Outriders and you need to own Outriders in order to play World Slayer. The game starts where you left the first game off at the pods camp. From here you speak to Chenna who will give you the option to start the campaign and go to the new areas. The first area being the glaciers. It's a new area, one you haven't been to yet and it's pretty awesome. You've seen it in the actual trailers and you're seeing it on screen right now. I'm just going to show a few segments here. In terms of footage for this video, I'm only going to be showing the first hour of the game. Maybe even less than that because I want you to experience the game for yourself. There are some really cool parts to this game. Walsall is considerably smaller than the base game. The base game had an average 15 to 20 hour campaign and for completion it's around 35 to 40 hours of game time. Some even took it up to 60 hours. That's not including the end game of course. Here in World Slayer, it's a story of two halves. This is because if you buy the bundle for the first time, you can skip the main campaign and start at level 30 with all blue gear. So the developers have made it so if you want to start the game straight and play with your friends who are already on World Slayer, they're not forcing you to play through the game and basically get to that point. You can immediately start a character at World Slayer level, it will take you straight to level 30, at which point you can go back and then do the original content again if you want to. It will be somewhat easier, especially now that you've got all your skills and stuff unlocked, but of course you won't have any mods and things like that, so you're still going to be considerably weaker than you know someone who's played Outriders and has got all the mods and equipment and legendary gear to go with it. Playing the campaign in this state will be harder than someone who has played the main campaign and has all the tools and gear to superpower them. Therefore, the time it takes to complete the campaign will vary from 4 to 6 hours for someone who is fully geared to 6 to 8 hours for those that are not. Now of course that time difference isn't that big, of course this doesn't take into consideration skill level and stuff, I'm just going by my own experience because I've played the game from World Slayer skip to completion and with my base character, my main character and my main character was a lot faster, a lot easier than what I experienced with the base character and it was a lot faster for me with my main character. Of course that isn't to scare anyone, the game isn't overly difficult as the new apocalypse tiers that they have introduced do help out here, it does smooth out the levels and make things more balanced but I'm just saying from my own gameplay experience there is a night and day difference in your damage output naturally which goes a long way to making things easier. World Slayer has also changed a few things, gone are the world tiers and the challenge tiers from the main campaign and expedition respectively and here we have the apocalypse tier. Base game owners will have access to apocalypse tier 15 but not to the weapons and gear of World Slayer, naturally that makes sense. If you own World Slayer you can go all the way up to apocalypse tier 40, that is a pretty big grind. To give you some indication, when I started World Slayer with my main character, I was at Apocalypse Tier 15, I'm now Apocalypse Tier 17 when I finished it. The grind to get all the way up to level 40 is going to be real, but I found Expeditions and the end game expedite this quite a bit. So. At least they thought about that going into this. One of the good things about Outriders was the side quests, hunts, bounties, secrets. Sadly World Slayer didn't expand on these, no extra bounties, hunts or in fact expeditions or quests. What it has in turn is a brand new endgame called Trials of Taria Gratar, a new pack skill tree and a new ascension system much like Division's Shade Watch. Of course this isn't all bad, unlike the base game where everything became useless once you hit challenge tiers. The apocalypse system brings everything in line and makes everything now relevant. Side quest rewards, bounties and hunts all can go all the way up to level 40 which is what I feel the team was partially relying on because let's face it, once you hit challenge tiers, no one went back to do the hunts or the bounties because they just weren't rewarding and you had to do 10 of them just to get one legendary, it simply wasn't worth your time. But now each of those has a chance at dropping legendaries because the apocalypse tier replaces the challenge tier and now makes it more valuable. So in essence 
you have gained bounties and hunts and side quests if you want to do them because in theory they should now be more rewarding. As with any expansion, balance changes have been made all over the place, some really drastic and in a good way. My Devastator now is a powerhouse, not techno level, but I can burn through enemies. That's enough for me. The addition of a third mod slot is also a big deal as it adds even more power to you, but also adds an even bigger grind as a third mod slot can't be changed unfortunately. You need this slot to land with what you'd want or need. Like the original, the first two can be changed but slight changes and uses of the third mod slot sent my impals from 500k to 1 million damage. Big big buffs with that third mod slot. Also some of the skills that have been changed, some of the mods that have been changed, Holy cow, they are amazing changes. Just wait till you see it, especially some of the ones that actually build a wall in front of you so you can actually hide behind it, like magma. That's gonna be awesome. Without going into spoilers, at the very start of the game, you find out that the anomaly isn't slowing down and the end is nigh and you need to find a way to survive the impeding doom that awaits you all on Enoch. I didn't believe it, but the anomaly, it's growing. Of course, there is the addition of the new villain, Ereshka Girl, but I'll let you play through and enjoy the story. It's good. A bit rushed in the end, I felt, which is a bit of a shame and could have been, you know, developed more. But in the end, after completing the campaign, you gain access to the Trials of Taria Gratar. This is where the end game begins and it's damn awesome. It's also still part of the main campaign. So when you finish the main campaign, that's like a chunk of it done. Then you get access to Trials of Taria Grata, which also kind of extends the story. It's kind of like a extension to what is there. And you need to play this because you pretty much start off here once you finish the main campaign. And once you go into this, there's loads of dialogue, loads of story, loads of crazy stuff going on that you really should pay attention to because by the time you complete the end game for the first time you're going to be seeing an ending scene that is going to make you go what the hell wow i want more of this of course trials of taria gratar this is where the end game begins and it's damn awesome it adds targeted loot multiple chambers of awesomeness and you're rewarded generously for each encounter it's not a short event Though you can stop at any time and continue on your return, you have three attempts and upon loss of all three, you are returned to the start of the game area. The fact that you get to keep all your loot is awesome and it means you are always progressing till you are able to complete it. Trials of Toria Gratar isn't a short event by no any means. It is something that's going to take you a while. I do recommend taking it on board with a group because it's going to be a lot easier, especially if you go down because as we're aware, with Outriders, if you go down, you restart. But if you're in a group, you can be picked back up. And that is where, you know, group play really shines. That is not to say this isn't possible solo. It absolutely is. Definitely something you want to check out once you finish the game and do to get those awesome builds. Targeted loop, of course, always helps. So, is Outriders worth your time? Absolutely. At $29.99, it's a good buy. It's a decent campaign that really only suffers for not being longer and giving you opportunity to flesh out more characters, but at the same time, it also makes sense considering the pace of the Anomaly Storm and the way the story is told. Outriders launched with many issues, but New Horizon came to set the record straight and fix those issues and did that and more. World's Lair just expands on this, providing you with more story, a new endgame, and making content previously made redundant now relevant. Of course, we can't go out without talking about the transmog system, which is totally free. Free you say, Chaos? Absolutely. All you need to have done is get the item once and you can glamour your heart away, a free feature introduced with New Horizon. With item locking, more stash space, and loadouts on the horizon, Outriders World Slayer will keep you entertained for a long time and definitely gets my seal of approval. But overall, I think World Slayer on its own, with the foundation bones of its predecessor, Outriders combined, and with the current game modes that are actually now accessible and doable because they are now relevant, with the expeditions also still being relevant in itself, I think it's a really good bundle. The story itself stands up on its own. It's got really good dialogue and overall i think it's really worth your time thanks for watching and i hope to see some of you over at twitch tomorrow for the early access stream as there are twitch drops for all i will be twitch enabled so that is good 
so it means that if you come and check my channel out and watch the campaign or just lurk around, you're going to get those Twitch drops and everyone is happy. Right everyone, thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next video and as always, remain legend.